Welcome to the Wedco Podcast, where wedding wisdom meets street smarts. We're dishing out all the tips, tricks, and wedding goss to take your wedding to the next level. Time to ditch the formalities and get this party started. Yeah! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wedco Podcast. I'm Togger. And I'm Joel. And we're here at the beautiful Quilla Lodge today. And who have we got here? Marina Machado. We've got oh in the God. podcast. Hello. Hello, Let's go. Hello guys. Hello. This is so professional. One, two, three cameras. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> go tell. And we, she's uh, sober. Yes. Yeah. Um, like but kind of barely. Joel was saying earlier, we reached out to the Instagram world and asked for questions from you and we had so much love oh, yeah. from guys. a lot of people that just wanted to hear from you. Really? So oh. we, we flew her back business from London to come back here <laughs> to be in the studio with us. Yes, that's right. Just arrived. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, thank you so much for coming. Coming in, Thank having you a chat. For me. Um, I'll read one straight off the bat. That oh. was just a, a love note. It was uh, no question, just lots of love to Marina. She's amazing. Oh, oh my god, you were yeah. amazing. That was, you from, ever wrote that was from that. my mum. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, mom. Helen. Yeah. <laughs> Except she takes it back because there's no cake today. <laughs> um, no cake. I'm so sorry. I owe you guys cake. Write it down. It Write it down. Yes, yes, Tasting boxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just uh, like ever since I first saw one of your cakes, I think it would have been we we're shooting uh, for yep. Bronwyn Scenic Rim. Yep. Um, was it the Saraba? Saraba State. Oh my god! And that was yep. the first one, and I was like, "What is this? Like how how does how is this a cake? How does this exist? It's just like art. Yeah. Um, it's different, isn't yeah, it? It's amazing. No, but thank you. Maybe before we start, like let's let's get into. Do you want to say a little bit who you are? Yeah. And, you know, how long you've been in the industry and what, yeah, what brought you to this point in your career? Okay. Oh, my God. The <laughs> Just a, li- a little question, a little question. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, I talk a lot. So stop me. Stop, Marina. That's it. <laughs> so um, I am from Brazil. Yep. Um, yeah. I left Brazil more to study finance. Okay. So I was in finance before. Um, but then I met my husband in London. Okay. You see, right. and my husband is such a kind, he's amazing, such mm. a kind soul, kind heart. And um, we were, things started getting a bit more serious. Uh, we were like, what do we want to teach our kids? I wasn't ever happy in finance. Yep. Mm. Uh, I come from a developing country, completely overpopulated. You don't really have choices to work with your passion if you don't have loads of money exactly yeah. when you're just right. working to live you yeah. you work to yeah. survive yeah. Yeah. you work to be able to get money to get somehow good education to somehow get an okay job to have a middle life yeah. lifestyle rather than living in favelas or places yeah. like that yeah. um but he was like you know what like what do we want to teach our kids do we want to teach we didn't have kids at the time but thinking about the future, future, like we want them to chase money. We, what do we want? Mm. Yeah. And we were like, actually, no, we want them to chase happiness. Mm. But what makes you happy? And he works in IT and he doesn't love it. He loves it, doesn't he? Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He loves it. I love it. Um, and I never really loved finance. So mm. we started the journey of trying to understand what we love and we didn't know. Mm. And I, I realized that I was always cooking yep. my entire life. Roughly how long ago was this? Um, like in a, so that was 2010. Okay. okay. And so is your husband from Australia or is he from He uh, is half Australian, half English. Okay, yep. So he was working there. Yep. But he yep. wanted to come back to Aussie. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell me that. <laughs> and then um, I'm like, you know what? And then I started like kind of going back on a journey of what I love in all my spare time, I was always cooking, mm. cooking. I would spend five, six hours in the kitchen cooking, cooking, cooking. And truly, when you trace back to my childhood, that's all that comes from my family. I'm from a state in Brazil where we are really known in Brazil as a state for very good food and very family-oriented cooking lifestyle. That's so sick. on the weekends, we go to my mom's farm, for example, and we would just be in that massive kitchen, the entire family, like 20 people, 20 women and men sitting and drinking, 
cooking the whole day. Yes, I can amazing. finish cooking uh, lunch, you eat lunch. Oh, let's start thinking about, would yeah. you like a little coffee? Let's make a little coffee. <laughs> yeah. How about a little biscuit for a coffee? Yeah. And then you go like that and you join into dinner and then and, and that was it. Yeah. Um, and then I had no money, guys. No money in London, yeah? Uh, I went to do an MBA, so all my money was there. And my hubby at the time said, m my boyfriend at the time, said, um, you know, let's invest in a cooking course and see how you go. Good and, on him. And I know. And I'm like, crazy. Like, I don't even know. <laughs> um, but then I did Le Cordon Bleu. Yep. Uh, which is a French cuisine yep. um, course. And absolutely loved it. So good. Loved it. it. It was writing for me. It was the first time in my life where I never watched the clock while yeah. I was working. Yeah. And then from there on, I connected to Michelin Star and yep. I, I worked with Marcus Waring um, to Michelin Star, open mm. kitchen, full on. And that was it for me. I knew I was in the right direction, yes. going in the yep. right direction. Mm -hmm. So... I talked a lot already, didn't I? No, not at all. No, it's great. Was, that, was that the Mandarin Oriental as well where you were there? So um, I always loved cooking cuisine mm -hmm. and pastry. Mm -hmm. We didn't, Simon didn't have the money to put, Le Cordon Bleu is super expensive. Yeah. Super worth it though, whoever have, has the money <laughs> do it. Um, so we paid for cuisine. Mm -hmm. Cuisine is cooking savory in restaurants, right? Yep. Um, so I could get a job, start making money yeah. and get some experience in yeah. pastry. Yep. Yep. So when I was at Le Cordon Bleu, the pastry headmaster found me a job at Mandarin Oriental. Yeah. Wow. And oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm, I miss cooking. It's just, I cooked fine high tea, high tea for the queen, oh. Michael Jackson, <laughs> yeah. and so on and so forth. But it's not, it's, for me, it's just the eye to detail. Mm -hmm. and, and that, like, it, it's never enough. Mm. You keep cooking and you, and you, and you want to do more. And you want to do more. You want to get better on this. You know you can push a bit more. It's, it's passion, isn't yeah, for it? for sure. Totally. Yeah. And I think that definitely is showing through in your work. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah so the, the cooking, the, the art situation in yeah. my work came for two reasons, truly. So when I started the, the business six years ago, I started as everyone starts. You just provide what people ask you yeah. to provide. And it was that phase of the semi-naked cakes with fresh floral. Yes. Yep, yep. And I actually opened the wedding, uh, a wedding cake. I, I opened a cake business because I wanted to spend my time with my kids. I was working too many hours in restaurants as a head chef. Yep. And I was missing out a lot on my my daughter's childhood. Yeah, yeah. It's tough hours. Like it's, yeah, Very tough yeah. hours. So when everyone is resting, we are working. Yep. And yeah. at, at, to start with, it's okay, but when... They go to a school, it's hard because you want to see them. Yeah. Mm. And if you work in restaurants, long hours, fine dining or yep. nice food, you gotta put the hours on, you know. It's a yep. tough industry. Yeah. And I did I didn't I didn't come to Australia. I didn't leave Michelin Star, Mandarin Oriental, London, all that cool stuff. Yeah. To come here and I came for a family. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for the lifestyle, living at Tambury Mount and yeah. surrounded by trees yeah. and koalas <laughs> and kangaroos. It's just, um, so I lost, see, I talk so much that I lost. What was I talking? No, no. no you guys need to stop <laughs> me, guys. Come you, on, help me out guy. here. Yeah, just captivated. We yeah, were like, yeah, keep no. talking. I'm loving I'm like, I'm going to move into your family up at Town Mount Tambourine and we can, okay, we can cook I all remember, day. I remember <laughs> what I was saying. So pretty much I was doing the whole semi-naked vibe, yeah. you know. See? Yeah, See? Yeah, yeah. I talk, but I know. <laughs> um, so I was doing it and... Suddenly, I started mass producing it. Yeah, it would be semi naked cakes all the time, mm. and the florist would would want to put the flowers on. And I started going, "No, oh, no, it's my cake. I yeah. put the flowers on." <laughs> and I'm like, "No," oh, as if I was doing a better job than the florist. But you start going like that, and and I just realized that I was. I moved from 
an industry that was eating my hours with my family yeah. to a type of job that I wanted a bit more of a lifestyle, but I let it take over mm-hmm. and and I was not happy anymore. And also I was not being creative. Yeah. I need creativity. Yeah. It fires me. And this creativity, I I now I understand it. It's a self journey for me, okay? Yeah. Cake making. I know some people think I'm completely crazy. And I'm okay with thinking <laughs> that I'm crazy. It's okay, no problems at all. But for me, it's an art. It yeah. is an art. Totally. It is how it's a it's a self. I'm finding myself through through cake making, mm. mm-hmm. you see. And I realize that I need so much creativity because if I go back to my childhood, mm. I since I was little, my my family, my, my grandmother specifically, she's an artist and she used to look after me. She paints, she used to paint and sculpt and um, in the afternoons I would be in her studio and for her to keep me occupied, she would let me carve pieces of wood with her, paint um, watercolors. Uh, She used to do etching too, so carve the wood and then print and all of that. And I grew up in that environment with uncles, uh, creatives everywhere. And when I went to cooking, I missed that too. So I'm like, I'm not happy. Yeah. Uh, what's the point? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So suddenly a passion became dreadful and I'm mass producing stuff again. Yeah. At the exact time where I was like, I'm going to quit and go back to restaurants because what's the purpose? My husband said to me, give your last go. Like, just go for your life. Like, what go for lose? it. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you have nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. Give one more year. Yeah. And on that year... Uh, I I got approached by the lane to do um, yeah. I know to to have a, a shoot on cakes. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. I can't <laughs> believe that. Oh my god. <laughs> like super excited. I'm like, but why? But why do they want me? But why? And all of that. And and then with the excitement, all the pressure started coming and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm not gonna do this if I fail. <laughs> And then I thought, you know what, I have nothing to lose, man, mm. because yeah. I'm not happy with semi-naked cakes. Yeah. And I'm not saying semi-naked cakes are not nice, guys. Yeah. Oh, yummy, beautiful, cute, and all of that is just not for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. You see, it's simple as that. So jumped at it, did the shoot with the lane. I remember when we were there on the day and they were photographing it. I remember um, Megan, Megan Kelly is a yeah. friend and um, she said to me, how are you feeling? And I'm like, can I swear here? Can I? Shit in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I think no one will like this. This is crazy. Yeah. Because I locked myself in my studio for one month. I said to my husband, you've got the kids. <laughs> And I just had mood boards. I put it all over my walls and I I just threw myself in that creative process. Yeah, cool. And in each one, I had three mood boards. I told my story. Yeah. Of of my story in life of traumas and healing, traumas and healing and turning something. Um, so traumas that really were sad and ugly and so yeah. on into something that built me and you know i'm imperfect i've mm. got my my, my scars and yeah. all, but i'm still beautiful yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes you are <laughs> you know what i mean yeah definitely um yeah i'll stop talking no not at all no yeah. that's beautiful i think it, for me like it <sighs> kind of how you touched on it before about like the you know the semi naked cakes again we're not saying that they're bad or anything but there was just kind of like in the cake industry of weddings there's nothing really happening it was just like you know it's probably one of the things that i say that we should scrap from weddings not so much having a cake but like cake cuttings i'm like they're boring they're awkward they're Mm. uncomfortable whatever i think there's a good way to do them and we can hash on that later but um it was just kind of sent like a really stale thing it was like you kind of everyone loves cake and they want cake at their wedding um but it was there was nothing really happening and so then to see you coming in and like putting your spin on it and your like it's 
what you do is like there's no one else. Well, at, at least, oh, at least, yeah. at least from what I see, especially in kind of like Australia, like Queensland, like there's no one doing it like that over mm, here. I think. Look, how I feel is if if each of us in the cake industry could really learn to be ourselves through our mm, craft. Mm-hmm then we would see so many different things, yeah, right? And, and very beautiful. We would be exploded and bombarded by new flow and creativity. The yeah. problem is, uh, and I don't blame whoever chases the trend. Of course, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll share here, actually. I'm struggling at the moment. We all are. You need to know. Because pretty much um, the trend is stuck. Now mm. Now it's it's a bit on piped cake, so yep. everyone is doing piped cakes. Is that like the – who's the chick that just which, – which of the Kardashians just got married? Was it Chloe? Uh, I, no, have I don't no know. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, okay, okay, Joel. Like, who, who's who's – <laughs> <laughs> it's my Saturday night watch. Okay. <laughs> No, um, who's married to... You're telling the is story. Oh, I got no idea. D- don't, don't look at me. Yeah, I Tra- got, dude, I, one, of, Kardashians? One, of, one of the Kardashians <laughs> is married to Travis Barker. <laughs> and they got married and there's, I feel like, very heavy that trend, okay. which is like white and red, um, yep. like very old school kind of looking cake. And I guess it's, is that what you call it? It's, piping? it's coming coming back. Yeah. It's the Lambeth, Lambeth piping style. Yeah, okay. It's all that. Yeah. And, and also that old um, vintage idea, retro yeah. mixed yeah. with it all. I love all of it. Mm, yeah. I love it. I'm telling you, I've, I made a cake like that. Yeah. Um, I love it, but I don't love making it. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Mm-hmm. I love, and, and when I look at the stuff that, the cake makers around are producing. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cute. Why yeah. can't I do that? But yeah. because I'm not that. Yeah. And I'm okay accepting that. Yeah. However, in saying all of this, we need to make money. Yeah, mm. it's still a business. Yeah. It's still a business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm not judging anyone. I'm struggling because I started getting uh, a lot of inquiries for Lambeth cakes. Yeah, and okay. I, I, I need money to yeah. pay my bills. Yeah. However... I I don't want to get deep in that because this business of mine became so personal to me. It's how I express myself and mm. heal through my art yeah. that I feel a little fake if I'm doing yeah. something yeah. that is not deep in my heart. Yeah, exactly. So, you, so, so if you're getting those inquiries, are you turning them away? Like, uh, or are you taking on, you know, if someone's like, we just want you to make our cake? Yeah, so see... I'll give you an, a simple example, Brie from the cake that ate Paris. Yep, yep. If someone sends me a cake packed with the cute floral edible work yep. Yep. and like you can see the love in hours that the person will spend on that cake. Yeah. Brie is your girl, man. Yeah. yeah okay. Yep. And yep. I go, thank you so much for being so amazing and inquiring with me. But according to those pictures, yep. I am actually not the best to yep. make it for you. Yeah, This is the best in my opinion. Yeah, And that's it, you know. If, let's say, um, look, even I was about to say, let's say I'm struggling with money because there is the ups and downs yeah, on our always, business, Especially right? weddings, weddings for sure, yeah, ups and downs. Yeah, we, we've got the seasonal. I've got all the money, I've got no money. Exactly, <laughs> like that. I still try to pass it on. So I'm learning now after six years that I I do have to control not overbooking mm-hmm. yes, sure. and not getting stuff last minute to just try to pay the bills. Yep. Yep. So to be honest, it's business management. Yep. You need to be a bit better on business management to control your cash flow, to put some money aside on those tough times. Yep, definitely. So you can actually still be you. Exactly. I truly really believe on that. Yeah. Going, going back to like the passion side of things, growing up, um, your parents are always like, do what makes you happy. You got to follow your passion, do that. And I feel like if it's one percent of the population does that, mm. I'd be very surprised. I would but, too. Like, there is there is no one like in a percentage wise. If it's one percent, and it's super scary. Like and, yeah. and like for you so to be able scary. to go out on that ledge and be like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to do what I love. Obviously, for what you do, you're going to have people that follow you because it's amazing, but it's so scary to do that. So yeah. scary. Yeah. People don't understand that. And because of social media, I'm going to put it out there, actually, because yeah. of social media. And 
social media is an amazing amazing mm. platform for us small businesses mainly to be able to uh, do our marketing and, and, and achieve sales for free. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I feel sometimes it gives a bit of a, an idea of a glamorous lifestyle living up in, in, in fulfilling the wedding industry yeah. Yeah. rather than how hard it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want to be yourself. Like yeah. if I want... Imagine this scene. Imagine it. Imagine. Just paint it up on this <laughs> screen right it, here. Put, put it out there. <laughs> a bride, con- a bride and a groom. A bride and a groom. They contact me. Marina, I would love you to make my cake. I want you to be you. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm yes. a people pleaser. <laughs> um, and we want to be surprised on the day. Wow. I get a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Really? A lot. And then I'm like, okay. Who you're That's is, sick. Imagine. Who, yeah, yeah, I know. Dope. Yeah. So the way the the, the, um, the cake industry think that this is like, my God, Marina is a goddess. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> they want me to be me. It's great. But can you imagine them walking in the room, looking at their cake and not liking yes, it? Yes, like the pressure. Yeah. The, the yeah. pressure that it comes. Also the pressure that if, I, if that is – my art and my healing through my art, mm. I am going to put all my yeah. heart out there. Yep. Whatever I'm producing, whatever I'm creating, I'm coming with that for you is a piece of my heart. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I'm, I'm healing and it's painful at that moment. So it will carry somehow that feeling. So the as an example, if you look at my work, three years ago, it was very imperfect, very fragile, very um, broken pieces everywhere, a lot of texture, yeah. you know? That was me healing through a lot of that I was going through. Yeah. And now my cakes are all like that because I'm like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm trying to say is you really, you are that. Yep. Yeah. I'm the I'm not the cake. Guys, I don't cook myself and put in the cake. Okay? It's just the cake <laughs> yeah, yeah. is a part of me. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> 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 it's only hand. a little piece, a little piece. <laughs> it's yeah. just a little piece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in and can you imagine like really pouring it out yeah. and people not liking yeah. it? Yeah. But you wouldn't have that. Look, Let's be real. I feel. Okay. Uh, we just had that uh, wedding at the uh, Earth House. Uh, you dropped uh, off the cake at the Earth House the other day, the yeah, other week. Yeah, yeah. And like you leave, and then I walk in after everyone's done their entrance, and there's, there had to be 30 people with their phones yeah. all around the cake really? taking photos yeah. of the cake. Oh I'm my like, God. I think they like the cake. Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Uh, look. I, 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 I've done one, I, I did a wedding with um, one of your cakes, and People at the same kind of story, there probably would have been 10 people like looking at it like with their phones out and then someone's like, how much? And they're like, probably a card's worth. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I was like, that's without, the, without the piping. <laughs> without the piping. Without the, the thing is, and that's another thing that's good for us to touch base with, pricing yeah. and cake making, you know. A lot of people because um, they look at that masterpiece mm. of a cake mm-hmm. and they think it's a lot of money. A car, man, if it was a car. <laughs> <laughs> you do two a year. Yeah, yeah, I'm done. I know. <laughs> it's, it, it is an, a very um, immature industry, cake making. Okay. Mm-hmm. Field, I should say. Very immature. Because we are populated with people that, like me, for example, that we made a business out of it and yep. we need that money. We need to make it very professional. We are relying on that. Yep. And also we are... Of a field populated with home cooks, home cooks, exactly. Yep. They are just making a little pocket money to help out yep. while they look after the kids. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying that Different. makes it very difficult yeah. to. Um, you can't compete with the, you the, com- the two hundred dollar cake. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, in terms in terms of price, people think if they are fishing for for um, paying less for a cake, yep. they think oh. So Marina, uh, this is Marina's cake. Okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to pay. And then you have a cake disaster. And yeah. I'm not saying because it's simply because of the journey I went through learning all that process to exactly. make that. Exactly. Yeah. Like you from know? all that way to actually dropping it off at the venue and yeah. like everything oh, else man. that's entailed there. We live in Southeast Queensland. Yeah. Yeah. Heat, humidity. Mm. 
just just we have cake groups of you know all the cake makers going like oh my god yeah. are we <laughs> suffering today you know? for real though on that note. How on earth do you transport a flipping yeah, cake? Yeah, like oh, no. refrigerated. How does it not fall over? It's crazy, isn't it's it? A- so uh, there is, and, and that's another thing, whoever can pay to learn things, if you have the money, learn the skills properly, not to get so disappointed by cake accidents, okay? <laughs> yep. I almost had a cake accident once when I, like two, two years, like down the track when I opened the business yep. because it was summertime buttercream cake it was like 40 degrees at the venue Mm. while i was taking the cake out someone bumped on me the cake went the top so what i'm trying to say is gotta have the skills unfortunately 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 (laughs) gotta put it there yeah put the dowels in put it there is a whole heap of um of of knowledge that you got to put on that for your cake not not to have a cake accident as far as the structure goes for the cake structure is very important it's it's kind of you gotta have it yeah you gotta have it i mean have you guys have you guys seen cake accidents during weddings i'm I'm never anywhere near the cake i'm like champagne tower cake Mm -mm, i'm nowhere near you really (laughs) i I have one where like it like the top tier fell off yeah Yeah. just because it had been sitting there for a couple of hours and a friend of the mum or something like that made it and it was just yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Or the like, uh, bridegroom cut into it and it just falls apart. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And I mean, a lot of venues nowadays, they don't accept um, yeah. like friends of friends that make, friends of the bride that make yeah. the cake. Yeah. And not just because of that. you got to think also, people are ingesting is yeah, yeah, exactly. In, ingesting exactly. that, so yep. true. You gotta have you gotta have qualifications to deal with food. Yep. You know. Actually, that's a good point. We're talking. Yeah, yeah we're, we're talking, talking to Che from um, Fig Tree, and yeah. he was saying the same thing. Uh, he was saying like, look, I've got no issue with people coming from offsite that aren't uh, you know professionals, but they have to be up to a professional standard. Exactly. Yep. You know, and so yeah, they need to they need to yeah be able to deliver the exact same way that a professional cake maker would. They need to be able to deliver the cake the exact same way. But exactly what you're talking about, like yeah. even like um, codes of practice for, for food. Yeah. Who knows where that cake's Health been and made? Health safety <laughs> like and all of that. Exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. And then that's going to reflect on the venue essentially. Yeah. Like if, if everyone the next day or that night's throwing up, that's it's going to reflect on the venue and everyone else's and the, the catering as well. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. It's, um, uh, to be honest with you, think about all of our suppliers, you know, the experience each of us are bringing to that day will affect on the whole scenario, the whole, all, all the memories mm. of that they are going to create on that day. You see, if yeah. I bring as a cake maker, that feeling of food poisoning, half of the yeah. the guests are food, are, are, are sick after the wedding, yeah. you know, the bride and groom having to contact the venue and going, look, I've got half of the, yeah. so can you imagine? Yeah, That'd no, be terrible. Yeah. That's what you are creating. So therefore you bring your standards to a very yeah. professional level. So yeah. you get all the qualifications, certifications, uh, yeah. you get um, allowance from the council, they will come, yeah, yeah. they will check everything. It's food. Yeah, it yeah, needs exactly. to be treated as a yeah, restaurant, yeah, sure. you know? Yeah. No, no, no one's bringing, yeah, no one's like bringing chicken in. Like, oh, I'll just bring a plate of chicken to your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Then, they're not Don't doing that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> but yeah, like oh, imagine, imagine everyone just like, oh, Quilla, oh yeah, I'm just going to bring in, you know, my own veggies and my chicken and just dump <laughs> it on the table. Yeah, like it's, yeah. it's never going to happen. Like what's yeah, the difference? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think it is, and, and that's where we are in the, the cake making mm. field the yes. industry is we are still maturing to something that we are trying to bring to a professional level as yeah. in like serious people going like look this is this is actually so hard yep. to make a three four tier cake man it's hard yep. i sweat like no tomorrow and i've i've been doing this for for six seven years yeah yep. and i'm a chef yeah yeah exactly I feel, I feel like the say the videography side of things went through that where there was all um, say like commercial videographers and they'd look at weddings and be like, no way, like I'm not like look down on like weddings. Um, and then it was just yeah people with like handy cams. I'd rock up and just dad bringing a video camera. And yeah, they, they, that that has definitely shifted where it is like a proper profession that people study for, yeah. and we are going to do this. Yeah. And so that's kind of the shift that the cake exactly. making industry is making currently. Yeah, for sure. Mm. And if you go to venues like that, Shay from yeah, yeah. Fig Tree. He came to me. I supply there a fair bit. Those guys yeah. are awesome. Yeah. He came to me and said, "Hey, 
can you believe that I've tried to make cakes? <laughs> because every chef from, not every chef, let's say 50%, we think, oh, it's food, I can make that. Yeah, yeah. And then they listen about the price of a cake. They, they hear it somewhere. They think, oh, my God, it's so, expensive. so expensive. I'm going to yeah, make yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then they go and make it. And most of the chefs, man, and when I go deliver the cake, they come to me and like, oh, man, I've made a cake once. You went like that. <laughs> because it is a complicated scenario. Yeah. Cake has... Um, um, mediums that are very unstable, very butter. Um, it, it's full of butter, things that melt in room temperature. Yeah, yeah. We live in a, in a hot, hot place. So yeah. it's much, much more complicated to be able to control that, make it stable enough to go all the way and also be yummy. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like which, have you ever went to a wedding where, you ate something a bit dry? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. You know what I mean? Many, <laughs> many times. <laughs> no, the no. boss group, like, take a bit of cake. You're like, no, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, let me have a look. I purposely don't eat cake at weddings anymore. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm good. <laughs> it's because simply um, if that is happening or, or the person doesn't have that much passion for cooking yep. or um, there is a lack of skill to a point where you prefer to make things that are more stable to go all the way up and give the look of yep. it. Mm -hmm. But then think about that. Let's think again about what you are bringing as in memories, fond memories, cake fond memories, okay? <laughs> yeah. um, you look at a cake and you go, wow, that's amazing. And then you eat it and you go, oh, oh. my God. <laughs> That shit. shit. <laughs> That's the memory you are yeah. creating. But if you, <laughs> if you, if you are able to to touch base on the senses with or with that person that that is eating your cake, so you create the visual, and then and then you carry that thought to the palate. Yeah. And then whenever that person thinks about the cake again. On someone's wedding, oh my God, do you yes, remember that, that cake? Yeah. And then salivates a bit because of the memory, the palate that yep. connects with the visual memory. Yep, oh my God, yeah. that's like, that's a blast. It's a massive yes. like double tick. If you can achieve as great a flavor as it looks. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's definitely like a science. It's, it's, it's nothing short of science for it's sure. It's crazy. So yeah. I, when I started, I started with... Um, have you got, you've seen my tasting box. It's my favorite. My, of course. <laughs> you will see again, okay? <laughs> so pretty I've had much. many of your cakes. <laughs> Which one's your favorite? Do you remember or am I putting on your on um, the spot? I think you do a coffee one. Yeah, yeah. the coffee one. Yeah. The uh, espresso big, martini. Big coffee nut. You saw yeah. it on the yeah. Kardashians or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the, the thing is I started with the... Uh, cakes and buttercream as feelings. Yeah. Cake, buttercream, cake, buttercream, so on and so forth. But then I got stuck again. I'm like, oh my God, I like cooking. Mm -hmm. That's what thrives me. And I'm like, I wanna cook more. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be adventurous. I wanna yeah. go crazy. I wanna be a chef. You know, yeah. Yeah. and then I started bringing all the, the the knowledge that I have as a chef in pairing the flavors properly with depth of flavor, textures, yeah. um, lots of uh, different feelings in just one flavor. You know, it, the yeah. last tasting box I, I put together, it took me three months Whoa. of testing yeah. until I was sure that I wanted to what I was translating through my flavors was actually what I wanted. Yeah. I was so proud of it, yeah. you know, to a point that when someone goes like, can I buy a tasting box before I book? I'm like, of course you can, because if you can't find your flavor here, yeah. then I'm not the girl yeah, yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But I set up in a way where you can always find a flavor for that palette. So people will love chocolate, decadent. There will yeah. be one day. A very light and... In, in, in soft flavor. Yeah. 
there is fruity, one, like yeah, or, exactly. Yeah. There is one that's like almost like a grain hug. <laughs> grain is hug, you <laughs> yeah. know. It's like the feeling of the recipe that my mom passed down yeah. to, you know, and you and you eat that. So there is all of that. I'm yeah. pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, a lot of thought goes into this. It's great. Yeah. I might quickly um, jump to these questions that okay. we've had uh, from some people online. Um, so one of the questions that someone's asked is, uh, how do you find balancing, uh, sorry, how do you find a balance between classes and workshops and weddings? Oh my God, that is so tough. I haven't so found Marina, yet. <laughs> haven't found yet. We haven't actually touched on it, but Marina, you also teach. Um, you've started teaching th this last year, is that correct? Or the last 12 um, months? First one, 2022. Yeah, oh, wow. cool. So you just got back from London and you're LA next week? Yes. Yep. So London, um, it was in November. It was, oh, was it? Oh, it was so good. So yes. cool. It was just, oh, so why do I teach? Okay, can, yeah, do we do still this. have time? We've got time. We've got time. <laughs> okay. For you, we got time. Oh, my God. Okay, so why did I decide Cancel to Cancel the next teach? guest. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. We are locking the doors. <laughs> so pretty much, um, I... To talk about the teacher, I'm going to go a little back on social media, okay? Mm -hmm. So, 2022, I think. I don't know if you guys know, but cake making, I don't know about photography. I would imagine it's a very lonely mm -hmm. um, yep. place to be. Definitely. Yep. If you don't grow your business to a point where you start hiring people, then you are by yourself. Yeah. And all of us work in different places, dealing with a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of work. We are everything in our business, aren't exactly. we? Yep. Juggling like crazy. So I started feeling very lonely. I, I'm a chef. I love that banter in the kitchen, you know, like going to come on, yeah. mate, come on, let's go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so How does it go, sorry? Let's go, let's do it. Service time, woo. <laughs> um, and then I, uh, the way I found to actually maybe not be that lonely was... <laughs> I put the camera on yep. and I just started recording what I was doing and talking to the camera. I, I used to How? watch your dances that you used to do in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit sad, isn't Not it? Not at all. I've done it too. <laughs> it, it actually worked. I would go like, yeah, let's go. Da, yeah. Da, let's do this. And, and so on and so forth. And then I put it on socials. And then suddenly I realized that a lot of people – he started asking questions and yeah. and I started helping, you know. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't have that help. I had yeah. to go through these struggles by myself. So, and I started helping people. Yeah. Okay. But there was a, pro a problem. There was a problem. There was a problem. The problem was my social media went viral. Yeah. Which is not a problem. Yeah, Everyone yeah. would be like, oh my God, my yeah. social media. For me, it became a little problem. Yeah. And why is that? It's, I, I really like pleasing people. Okay. Mm. Yep. I mean, who is in hospitality that doesn't like yep. pleasing people? Yeah. But the problem is that the amount of work that came my way with trying to help people, yep. I found myself after one year losing my time with my husband yep. while we were trying to catch up at the end of the day in be together I was on the phone editing videos yeah. and answering your questions yeah you know what I mean and 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 suddenly it just became too much for me yeah, yeah. but I still wanted to help Makes and sense. to be honest with you I love interactions like we are doing here I yeah. the online situation for me is like it's, it's, it's a bit I hate it's it. it's not the there for me yeah you know, I want to I wanna see you guys yeah. and like really experience it, mindfulness and being in the moment. Yeah. yeah. And I don't feel I can be exactly like that on online. And then I got invited to teach um, by a, a beautiful host in London, yep. Don Welton. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so happy. But then pressure is on because yeah. then the world is not anymore. Tambourine Mountain and surroundings. It becomes yeah. like, whoa, everyone is looking at me. Yeah. All the best cake makers in the world that go to those studios and yeah. are invited. But then I, I, I overcame that, yeah. that fear because... I really wanted to help. I want to be there. It's yeah. my way to to give back the bless that I have for having people trusting me to, yeah. to with my passion. Yeah. It's a bless. How can I help? 
Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It does, yeah, it definitely does, does for sure. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. the teaching is just like it's it's amazing. They come and they like they they open their hearts, and I go through a process of telling them I'm not God. <laughs> it's stop thinking I'm a goddess. I am not. I'm just like human. Yeah. The only difference between us and that's why you are here is actually because. I started making different things that everyone was doing. Yep. I felt very uneasy at the exact moment. Mm. I felt like no one would like it. I almost got my cake and put in the bean. Yeah. But I decided to take a deep breath and walk away from it. Yep. And maybe give a chance for that to not be a fuck up, be an opportunity. Yeah, totally. And that was exactly what I did. And then I helped them to get through that process using one of my designs in class. Yeah. So they go exactly through what I went through in my studio by myself. And yep. I just hold their hand and I go, mate, hanging there. I've been there. And I can tell you, it's worth it going through these struggles. It's just new neural pathways you're creating in yep. your brain. Yep. Yep. Just go for it. Yeah. And then they go for it. <laughs> yeah. And like you're always gonna you're always gonna mess something up or and you just gotta like figure out how you can like turn that around and use that and be like, I've just gotta work with this now. Yeah. Like if it's you know, if it's a crunch time, if something happens on the the morning of a wedding or um, w- w- are these classes that you're doing, are they like wedding cake maker or are they just cake makers? Ma- they are cake makers, but most of them wedding cake okay. makers. So yeah. um, I, what I always tell them, and that if I can if I can recommend to whoever, whoever is there that is struggling cake making and is like, like, I can't make money, I don't feel myself, make, give yourself one day in the kitchen per week. One day where you are not making cakes for anyone, you are making a cake for you. For you. Yep. And I'm not saying, okay, get dummy cake, mate. Get yeah. get the dummy cake and just do crazy Create. stuff, like yeah. crazy. Yeah. If you are used to get a type of medium and use it in a certain way, don't do it. Do the opposite. Yeah. Like get your fondant, cook your fondant. Yeah. I don't know, if just it's not go for a, crazy. It's, yeah. yeah. Like if it's not for a client, like it, it, it's okay if you mess up. Or it's okay. You're just like, cool, I'll just paint, take that off and do something exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and then really cool. you are actually saying yes to yourself. Mm. So that way you are like, you're still paying the bills with the cakes that are coming, but you yep. are actually finding who you are through cake making, you yep. see. And then when you... you Fuck it up. So I'm sorry, I'm swearing a lot, but I'm going to keep swearing. Yeah, Can fine. you guys beep me? No, we don't need to. Beep, no. beep. <laughs> um, Just the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> if you fuck it up, it's fine. Yeah. Keep, keep fucking it up, actually. Once it will be, the fuck up will be an opportunity yeah. and you are going to be proud enough to show it to the world because yeah. it's you. And suddenly you're going to realize that some people like you. Yeah. And exactly. you going to love you for it. People. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it stick to them because they are going to they are going to let you be you and yeah. they're going to pay for that. They're going to value that, exactly. you know. And people yeah. like taking the workshops like you are, they're not the people that just went the safe option. You know, no. it's never the people True. like, "Oh no, I just went safe and I just kind of did what people wanted." Like people aren't going to learn from those people. Yeah. yeah. It's and all the people coming to see you are probably still the ones who are still scared and like, well, I'm just yeah, doing, you know, exactly. I, I'm too scared to express myself because what are people gonna think? And I'm not gonna make any money and we can't live. But yeah, they just they almost want to get that from you as well. Like yeah. how yeah. how did you do that? I feel I feel more I feel exactly that. I feel I'm there. I'm not I keep coming to my workshops, please, my master classes, <laughs> okay, please, please. But um I feel they just need they need a a buddy, yep. you know, yeah. to just tell them, mate, don't don't put me on a pedestal. Yep. We are we are here together. And and if I did it, you can do it. And that's how I did it. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're like we're all our own worst critic. And so when you're your own worst critic and you're then isolated to yourself at home or in your own kitchen, and then you see social media and you're like, this person's flipping crushing it. And it's like you p- paint this reality that's not actually the reality, but it's just your perception of it. And so I think it becomes A, lonely, B, you chase perfection, and we all know that no one's perfect. And so you're just kind of stuck in this infinite loop where you're like, I'm alone and I'm not doing good enough and I'm not making money and I'm, you know, I'm not getting bookings or whatever it is. And 
yeah, it can it can be a pretty it's, pretty it, hard time. It's so I cannot agree more with you because if you think I'm I'm very into uh, psychology, yeah. uh, meditation, and things like that because also. I need to control anxiety and yeah. stress. Yep. I have very high levels of it. And being a perfectionist, as mm. far as what I learned in psychology, let's say, is is a way of um, it's a way of of controlling anxiety actually, because you want everything so perfect that then you don't do it because you don't want to yep. go through the anxiety of not getting it perfect, yeah. you know, or you go like. I want it so perfect that I'll never get there. Therefore, I'm not going to do anything. Not do, yeah. um, so what I the, I think what they need to understand, and that's what I tell in class, is we are not seeking perfection. And don't seek acceptance. Yeah. Seek you. Yeah. And someone will see that. And you will feel very... Um, proud of what you are doing too you know because yeah. it is a piece of you there yeah. so that and, and also going through the the struggle of the process because we tend to follow the path that we feel comfortable with yeah. so every time you get out of it you are going to struggle a bit but then you know new opportunities will come yep. so the classes i just i just guide them through with me and, and let them know how, uh, you know, hanging there. Don't give up. Yeah. Don't don't put your cake in the bin. Let's keep going. Yep. And, yeah, it's amazing, guys. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> it's a, it's an experience, hey. That's so cool. I might go on to the booking experience. Or do you have a few questions from guests? Uh, from I might quickly smash do, through. Do yep. um, because I can't shut up, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we didn't actually answer that question. <laughs> how do you what balance was the question? My you, God. No, 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 let's, no, no, I need to answer. Tell how me. do you balance between classes and workshops and then weddings? Why didn't I answer that? Because <laughs> we hadn't it's actually... It's a very simple <laughs> question. Because we hadn't actually touched on the fact that you teach. Oh, yeah. because I went through social media, through this and blah, blah, blah. Okay, how do I balance? I learned, I learned one way of balancing yep. this. I always overbooked <laughs> because um, I, I'm a people pleaser. Pe pleaser. Yep. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is I burn out yep. and then my passion disappears and I start making the cakes and I'm not connecting. And that, oh my God, <laughs> You're good. And that carries on. Stop your hands. <laughs> no, leave your hands. Um, it's good. <laughs> that but. carries on on me going through a process where I'm not happy. I'm spending time with my kids because I feel guilty not spending time with my kids. But my head is not with my kids because yep. I'm overbooked. And then I go to the cake and I'm unhappy because I'm not spending time with my kids. Yep. And that is a, a, an alarm for me. That is telling me I learned that already. I learned that around the third year of my business yeah therefore this year and last year i was able to get in a balance yeah where i can i i go through the season and then after the season i have we bought a caravan so good oh, so we were like we have we have to just take time off yeah, yeah. the entire family kind of and, and and feel the bucket again yeah, the happy yes. bucket kind of loops back to what we were saying like just before we turned the cameras on it was like what makes you happy and like what kind of fuels your bucket and then it's like making time for that and then like working outside of that to yeah. essentially like fund it or like whatever you need yeah. to do that's so, right yeah so that's cool. for me if, okay <laughs> did you see that did you see that that's cool okay let's move to that okay go on um what do you do if your customer doesn't if sorry what do you do if what your customer asks for is not like is not what you like or your or it's your style okay i guess we've kind of yeah we've, touched on that. just pass it on to yep. your cake buddy man have yep. cake buddies you yep. know like we we have a community of cake makers around here where we support each other you yep. know yeah we always struggle. Let's go together. For vice versa, would there be many people yep. that would go to someone else and then they would pass on the work to you? Because I feel like you've got a very distinctive style. I think so. Yep. Um, my style is very distinctive. Yep. But for example, I'll give you I'll give you an example. If someone comes to me and wants uh, an ethereal look yep. and I'm fully booked, I'm not going to say I'm fully booked, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say I'm not available. However, I know that this cake maker here can can kind of get, get something on those lines yeah. for you, you know? Yeah. It's community. Come on, Yeah, man. totally. Yeah. 
Um, he keeps saying, yeah, 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 totally. It's <laughs> him telling me, Marina, let's wait, go. Wait, wait, I need no, to no, get no, through no. the questions. Let's commercial break. <laughs> 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 and um, this one's just a fun one, I guess. But it says, uh, what are you listening to, musical podcast, late at night when it's one of those cakes that took too long? Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I am... I'm very in nowadays. I think I got it right. If I did get it wrong, you tell me. But I've been very into classical music. Oh, well. Am I responding to the question yeah, properly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, piano is really f- just just is just hitting my heart in a different way and yep. it's really soothing me. So every time I need I need that that stop everything. Yeah. I put piano. Um, do you guys know Ildovico Eunandi? I don't know. No. Oh my God, I don't know how to pronounce, but oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. So, yes, piano. Yeah, cool. Nice and cool. And so, a lot of music going on in the kitchen. Yeah, mainly. I normally, uh, it's my, my music taste is hard, but <laughs> um, normally I got used to working commercial kitchens with those like bang on, mm. dum, 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 yeah. dum, whatever, yep. dance. At the end of the day, when I'm cooking, I feel if I put that, I connect to being a chef because yep. I was trained like that. So when I'm cooking, I'm going, dee, 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 dee. But did you like that? Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> one more time. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, don't say it. All right, I'll say it. And, but then when I go to designing at the moment, yep. it needs to be very calm. It needs yep. to be piano, very soft and mellow going through like. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I mean, I'm kind of much the same. I'll, I'll be like while I'm editing something, I'll be like listening to whatever, like some jammed out beat. And then like if I'm editing like photos for, for say, I, like I've got to have lo-fi music on. Oh, really? Like, mm. like no <laughs> lyrics. Like a or cafe. Like, yeah. like how, Joel? In the mm. <laughs> 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 Let's cut this episode. <laughs> no, this is great. Um, you were going to touch on something. Um, what was I going to say? Well, I can't even remember what I was in a relationship now. Oh, um, thank goodness. Not just me that forgets. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think about that. Sorry, I cut oh, you off. Um, so this wasn't the question. What would a typical um, booking process, I guess, so someone's come to you, they've, they've seen you in the lane and they love everything you're doing. Um, uh, do a lot of, I'll say couples, but brides, do they it just... <laughs> It's not the dude. <laughs> it's definitely not the dude. I had like two dudes. <laughs> that sounds weird. I had two, two dudes. dudes. <laughs> I had two grooms that were like full on, yeah. maybe okay. three full on, I'm the cake guy. Yeah, right. That's the only thing she gave to me type of thing. Yeah. But the rest of the brides, yeah. Uh, okay. So. Do, do they, um, do you, like you said, you have free range on a few of the weddings. Is that pretty common? Like, is that 50% where brides would have seen your work and be like, create me something? Or how does that work? I think it's a mix. Yep. Okay. If someone comes to me, my style is just so me, yep. isn't it? it that is. they really want whatever yeah. I'm going to bring on yeah. those lines. So the process pretty much is um, once they come to me, I ask them the suppliers so yeah. I have an idea because then we know yeah. uh, the, our work through, uh, you know, the style of each of us. Yeah, exactly. So just knowing the suppliers, I know what's going to be the yes, for kind sure. of the end, re- not the end result, but what they are aiming for. Yeah, what's going to be um, the overall look, vibe, exactly. feel. So yeah. um, mo- most likely uh, I'm working very close to the planner or stylist already. Yeah. And then I ask for all the floral brief and all of that and mood boards yeah. and so on and so forth. Is If they have a planner and I stylist, then I'm touching base with them straight yeah. away yeah. and I'm seeing what the overall idea is. And also I ask them to send to me some cakes just as as an idea, like many. Yeah. I say, send me 10 cakes. Doesn't mm. need to be mine. Just yep. send me. And if not just cake, send me pictures of something you love mm. or something that is important for you for that big day. And with that, then I go, okay, so what would you like? Would you yeah. like me to go crazy and be organic? So yep. it's a organic creative process or would you like to know exactly, you know what I mean? And, yep. and it's, it's pretty much like how much they can take on the day and also how much I can take on, on being a surprise. Yeah. yeah. I would, 
I would like it to be a surprise if if I'm certain that what I'm going to create, they are going to love. Yeah. So if I have a clear picture, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's be a, yeah. make it a surprise. Yeah. But some brides, they like to know exactly what they are going to mm-hmm. get. They yeah. planned everything else and they want and, yeah. and I want to I wanna make her happy. Yeah. And if being on top of what I'm going to do, like as in like knowing exactly what I'm going to do is going to make her feel better about the process. Then I, I'll give her a good four to five sketches yeah. and she mm. can go, oh, I love that. Oh, wow. She can choose one, two or the last bride that I sent the sketches, I got an email. She mixed the sketches. And oh, I'm like, wow. how awesome is that? She's yeah. like, I love the color. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So that's it. So it depends what they. So they, if they you've like. got, um, if you're like, if if a bride, if a couple haven't seen the cake and they're like, show it, like just do whatever, and we'll see it on the day. Are you doing like a reveal to them on the day or? God. Oh my God, it's so stressful. <laughs> it's so stressful. Or are you just like laying <laughs> before they come? Yeah. So the first ones, the first ones, because let's say nowadays I might have um, 40 to 50% of my work is a surprise. Mm-hmm. So I kind of got used to it. So I, I don't stay there like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But the first ones, not the first ones, a fair bit, I was there like this. <laughs> and uh, it is very stressful. Yeah. And also, don't forget, the mom of the bride, da, 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 uh-huh. and then they go, yeah. Da, yeah. you know. Um, but j- let's just remember that nowadays I accept surprises just when I'm 100% yeah. sure I can deliver that okay. because the mental stress of it sometimes is not beneficial for me. You yeah. know, I need to... I learned to draw that line where I can, um, I can look after my mental health. Too. Yeah. yeah, bringing yeah. all that stress. If I can't handle, then I run low again. I burn out, and then I don't want to see cakes anymore. And yeah. that's not the purpose of. Yeah, fair enough. We're all guilty of that taking on too much totally. work because you want to people please, and people come to you and are like, I'd, I'd love to, and you take on too much work. What what would an average year look for you? Like, are you wanting to do? 30 weddings for a year or is it more or like where did you have a happy medium at the moment? I found I found my happy medium last year and this year. Yep. Um, it, it, I, I had found it before but then I started doing workshops. Exactly. In workshops, uh, it drains me. Yep. As much as it's so fulfilling, I'm yep. giving so much yep. to so many. Definitely. When I do, I do for the one I did in London. Um the first one in 2022, 98 students Whoa. wanting throughout the six days. So yeah. 16, 14, 16, 14, and it went like that. By the end of it, I came back and I was ready. I, I had to hit wedding season because I had I had overbooked. Yeah. Yep. And then I ran very low throughout that season and mm. I didn't want to see cakes. Yeah. And you gotta keep going because yeah. you gotta fulfill the beautiful couples that booked you and want you to be you. Yeah. So uh, I decided that I'm not traveling that much. Okay. I'm just traveling to the few studios that I know they accept my art with love and they want me to pass that love and passion through. Yep. So there is that balance of money and like love and passion, love and passion mental health. It's hard to find that balance. And at the same time, because last year I, I taught a lot in, internationally, yeah. I I was not very happy away from the kitchen. Yeah. I need to cook. Yeah. I am a chef at the end of the day and my passion comes through cooking for you to eat. Yeah. So m- from answering to that question, for me, more than seeing someone looking at my cake, I love that, mm. but I I kind of have a thing about watching people eating my cakes. <laughs> this little Marina's I got like this. Like, yeah. oh, like you, a, did a you get that taste? <laughs> of her watching other people <laughs> eat. So, I'm mm. like, oh my God. Okay. Here's your tasting box. Do you want to open it? And it's that the two spoons there. It started eating it. Let me see. Yeah, give me the food. I'll, I'll feed <laughs> Let you. me feed you. <laughs> there is that, you know. Yeah. It's it's the true passion. Every chef that's passionate, you will see them going like, oh my God. Do yeah. you, how did you yeah. go there? Yeah. Do you like the text? Mm. Yeah, and that's yeah. Like from your upbringing, obviously, with the family yeah. and the community and everything like that. It's like, yeah, yeah, your, your parents and your everyone like feeds to make you happy. You it's know? it's and the it, way we show love. Exactly, yeah. it's through food. Definitely, yeah. you know. One of the things that I wanted to kind of briefly touch on as well before we kind of wrap up because we're no already, wrapping up. We are going to lock the doors. <laughs> we're an hour in. Um, 
Well, both Steve and myself, like we said at the start, we found you from doing style shoots and stuff. And then since that style shoot, I've done a, a couple with you. Um, how have you found them? Like, are you finding them, you know, beneficial for you? Whether that be, you know, bringing you work, like, is it kind of getting your name out there and more couples are finding you and booking you for their wedding? Or like, what's kind of your mindset behind doing it? Because I feel like we've been hit up to do a few shoots lately and they're like, should we do a cake? And I don't feel like you wouldn't do a shoot and not have a photographer. You wouldn't do a shoot and not have, you know, a bridal dress or something like that. And so, um, yeah, I'm intrigued to see like where you find the benefit for you being part of that. So I think... And is, sorry, and is it beneficial for you? Have you found much from it? Okay, so if you look when we met on that shoot, was it the first time you guys were working together? At the Sarah bar. We might have shot weddings together, but yep. it might have been our first sh- like shoot that we did. It was shoot together. such a good vibe between you two on that shoot. It's not hey. anymore. They're right. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> he talked about the Kardashians, <laughs> man. Watch him. Oh, no, yeah. Anyway, the Kardashians. Um, I'll leave. <laughs> so pretty much uh, when, when you were starting, like that's the feeling I have, um, mainly as uh, the cake make, uh, a cake maker, as you said, the cake is not the main thing on the wedding, you yeah. know. I mean, if you don't have a photographer, then how are you going to capture those memories, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't go without a cake. Totally. Right? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are choosing to go uh, cheese tower, champagne tower, yeah. because they don't have the budget anymore for a cake because things became so expensive. But the thing is, if you want to if, if you wanna tell people in a way, look at these beautiful things you can have for your wedding yep. and you don't have customers coming in, go for a style shoot, yep. right? Yep. Show to them what you can supply. Mm-hmm. Um, so the start of my business, I did so many um, shoots. Yep. I was a part of so many shoots because I was getting content from professionals, mm-hmm. legends like you guys that, oh, that <laughs> seriously <laughs> that photograph something that we – we make and, and make it all look so amazing, you yeah. see, instead of my iPhone picture on the wall of my studio. It's it's another level. Yeah. So And also you are networking. You are meeting people, not just networking business-wise, but you are socializing yeah, for sure. in the wedding industry. So I highly recommend. Nowadays, for me, because I've got such a uh, distinctive style in cakes, I prefer not to join every shoot. Yeah. Why is that? Because my cakes are not supposed to fit in every yeah. every style. Let's yep. face it, man. Yep. They are a bit crazy. <laughs> my cakes are a little crazy. They are they, they tell a story, you yep. see. So if you are a bride, for example, that you are after a floral cake, go to Brie. If you are after a Lumbeth, piped cute cake. Get a Chloe Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, it will really depend on that styled shoot, you see. Yeah, yeah, Otherwise, sure. it gets lost in, my cake gets lost in yeah. translation. It's like the whole idea of the shoot. Yeah. Oh my God, what yeah. the fuck is that cake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it but also, like, I feel up. like, for, you know, from my perspective is if it was kind of like, I've, I've done a couple of style shoots where it's like, oh yeah, there's a cake and it's like, cool, like, my perspective, probably a shit perspective to have, but it's like, oh, yeah, we'll get a few photos of the cake for the artist that made it or, you know, that kind of thing. But it's – you kind of get the shots and then you're like, all right, on to the next. Kind exactly. Of thing. So, like, you wouldn't – especially, you know, considering there's so much love and time and effort that goes into yours, that would be a pretty shit thing to have, just like five, ten cakes. I, Again, I could not agree more, actually. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. No, I was just going to say, like, no photographer would see your cake and be like, oh, let's just get five shots and move on. Move on. But – yeah, it's. I think. I think it's exactly what you said. It, it for me, if the feeling, if I'm not creating the intriguing feeling coming from mm. you, photographer, yeah, to the point that you go like, oh my god, yeah, I still that. just remember that yeah. first one, and then yeah, you yeah. want to actually get closer because let's say, let's say in your mind, in your plan taking pictures, you have okay, cake photo, uh, shoes photo, dress photo, mm. and then you go. A close up and a long one. Yep. I want to take you out of that. Yeah, yeah. Because yep. I want you to come with me to this 
yeah. intriguing journey that I that I'm telling you a story. Yeah. Therefore, I need to invite you through the little bits of mm. it, and that's why when you get close to my cakes, they have details. You yeah, know, yeah, that beautiful cake you photographed for me. Yeah, the one the the shell. Um, it was at Summer Grove. You, uh, Summer Grove. I did it with Ivy yes. and Bloom. Yeah, 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 yeah. You photographed it in a way, man, that I looked. <laughs> 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 you, I Wonderful wanted, image. <laughs> 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 yeah. Shameless I wanted thought. to represent the ocean, yeah. you know, through yeah. the cake. And there was a, a, one way you photographed it. And I know you got close there, I mean. Mm. And it just looked like the waves of yeah. the ocean. And for me to see that when the photos come away, I'm like, oh, my God, he got it. Yeah, he yeah. understood it. Yeah. He he got in the story, you mm. know. Yeah. yeah. How awesome is that? That's yeah. art, guys. Yeah, totally. And, totally. And especially like even like talking about the cost, like we've talked about it before, us to rock up to take, you know, shots at a, at a photo shoot, at a style shoot. It doesn't cost us anything yeah. apart from time. So then we're definitely like very aware, you know, it's going to cost me X amount of dollars to do it still has to be a business decision where you're like, am I going to get this much work back yeah, exactly. you know, from putting in this money? Yeah. So, yeah, um, I can definitely understand being more selective of what shoot you want to be a part of now compared to when you're first starting out. Yeah, exactly. And and, and also, for, you know, for everyone is proud to put those photos that you guys are spending all your time taking and mm. going back to your house and editing it and yep. creating that whole memory for yep. all of us. Yeah. Imagine you spending all that time and the cake just doesn't fit mm. to the whole idea yeah, and yeah. no one is sharing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. definitely. So totally. there is that too. And then there is the uh, heart broke, your broken heart from not seeing people sharing your work. Exactly. You start questioning yourself like, oh, it was not good enough or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I want to touch on one last thing that I saw. <clears throat> um, Sweet. Going into like the art of your cakes. Um, the torso cake. I saw this. Oh my god! Oh yeah! <laughs> like I just saw that. I'm like, okay, so I already you look at your cakes and think they're pieces of art, and then I saw the torso oh, cake. Awesome. I'm like, how amazing is that? The torso cake. So is, this, is this something new? It kind of is a two part question. I want to know where do you get your inspiration from? Is it from like fashion design? Are you bringing any of those elements in? Um, and then yeah, also. Obviously, you've touched on being, you know, within a really artistic family. I just want to see the, the process of all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, I think first of all, I surround myself with things that really feed my soul. Yeah. Okay, it's as mm. simple as that. I know it sounds a bit airy-fairy, but it's not. It's very simple. I used to see you go... Uh, you used to put on your Instagram that you used to go for walks to like I rainforests do my walks. and, you know, waterfalls and exactly. stuff like that. Exactly. I live at Tambourine Mountain. We've got beautiful walks everywhere. We've got five fakers there. Mm. Man, I'm always shoes off, touching yeah. the ground, grounding, all that stuff, you know, yeah. going for walks. Um, nature is something that really soothes me. Yeah. And it's one of my main inspirations. How do you see a tree and you're like, how am I going to put that tree on a cake? It's that simple, beautiful movement mm. that suddenly the wind touched the leaves and it inspired me because it was the right moment where my heart was at the right place. Yeah. And I was just full of happiness to see that and find it beautiful. And yeah. suddenly that movement turns into a color that I saw somewhere else and then it will turn into something abstract that will go like that, plus some details that I saw mm. on, on a flower, on a dress, you know, it, it, yeah. it's very organic. Yeah. I just need to be on the right place for it. If I run low on energy, I can't see beauty on things, right? Yeah, yep, I think sense. it's definitely. Can you ask that question again? Because I started talking like no, crazy. No, 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 you didn't at all. Am uh, I, I just, answering? Do you take much inspiration from the fashion world or from design? Like, okay, yeah. so the it, for me, the main one is surrounding with you know, like being in the right place as in for me to create. And then also, of course, from fashion, yep. um, mainly, you know, um, the movement of the dresses, I need to see all of that. I, I really like seeing the dress, mm -hmm. ask ask the whole idea of the fashion of the wedding because mm. then I'll, I will see how important that is. And if... If, for, if there is something in the dress that will catch my attention with some work of the floral, that movement will catch for me. Yep. Yep. My art is more based in movement and texture. Yep. I love that. Yep. And I play with that in a way. So 
I keep going back to saying movement, movement, yeah. because it is movement based for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think we even saw one of your cakes did have some lace or something from one of the wedding dresses. I swear there was yes, a cake. Yes, there was. You like um, brought that into the dress. Yes, the cake as well. I, I do tend to do stuff like that. So, uh, for example, if a bride is very, very into the wedding dress and there was one actually that the, the um, grandmother made oh, wow. the wedding oh, wow. dress. So I, I brought the cake with the the wedding dress, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I like those details. The torso cake. The yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I talk about <laughs> yes, the torso yes, yes, cake? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. What time is it? We got five minutes. Oh my god! I'm talking about the torso cake. <laughs> I talked about the torso cake. Uh, the torso cake. I always wanted to make a torso yep. as a cake, but at the time, now I I worked a bit more on these. But at the time, I did I um, I was not very good with um, sculpting skills. I'm still not good. I find hard to see bodies and faces. Yeah. That's why my work is more abstract. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't sculpt on a cake. I tried actually a torso on a cake. I wanted a torso on a cake. I tried and it looked shit. <laughs> and then my hubby is my beautiful hubby, very talented, draws like beautifully, and he sculpts very well. And he had a bit of free time, and I said, "Hey, do you want to sculpt a, a torso for me?" And then we had two days. Where we just oh, sat there together, man. And he he went like, how, how do you want these? And I'm like, oh, this looks beautiful. And then he got very attached to it. <laughs> and when I was like, no, I don't like, I want a bigger bum. <laughs> and he's like, no, it doesn't make sense. And I'm like, okay, it's our thing, <laughs> you do you. So from that, I, I contacted a friend, a yep. sculptor, and he taught me to make a mold out of the torso. So I made a, a silicone mold out of the torso and then I was able to make a cake out of the silicone mold. And it was a beautiful process from connecting with my husband, making what I, we want to make became a little project of ours, yeah. spending yeah. some time together. And then counting on a beautiful friend that spent three days, man, with oh, wow. me in his studio, teaching me for free. Yeah. Pure kindness, oh, yeah. uh, his, his skill, like it's such such con deep connection. And yeah. then making the mold and making a cake out of it. Yeah. Somehow, I don't know how, all that deep story flows through my cakes. And then the ones that have deep stories are the ones that people connect the most. Yeah. They just, in my courses, they are the, the cakes that have deep stories. Yeah. Mm. They want to learn the deep ones. Was are. that cake made for anything in particular? Was it for a couple, or was it just a I cake just that you made for yourself? On my on my free, I have one day free day in my kitchen so where good. I'm like, don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want. <laughs> Love it. And that was it. That's awesome. That was I normally Mondays. Monday, okay, mm. what do you want to do? I want to make a torso. So it took a long time mm. of Mondays yep. and yeah. then and, and weekends on my, my friend's studio to make it. And then I made it. And one day, one of my stylists, uh, the stylists we have around, they're yeah. amazing, aren't yeah. they, guys? Mm. Come on. Yeah, yeah, they're they're really awesome. Definitely. So Heidi went like, Marina, we've got these. This is the idea, blah, blah. And I'm like, mate. I've got something <laughs> for you. <laughs> and then I showed to her the idea and she was like, I love it. Let's do it. That's sick. So, yeah. Awesome. I stopped talking. All right, we, we should probably wrap up now. But, um, yeah, thank you so much for coming <gasps> in and having this chat. This is everything we could definitely have hoped for. Why don't you quickly uh, tell everyone how they can find you and get in touch with you? Okay. Call me. I'm joking. <laughs> Zero don't four. call me. Um, you can find me through Instagram, Marina Machado Cakes. Send me an email, please. <laughs> yeah. If I don't respond because I'm drawing a line, I will respond soon. Yeah, for Guys, sure. thank you so much for no, having me. You. And thank you also for doing this awesome idea. Whose idea was and it? Both of us. Sure. Really? <laughs> was it? 
I saw yeah. I saw a bit like that. No, I was gonna flirt to Steve. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely had to talk him into it, but then once we both got on board, we've both been on board this since is then. Awesome. Yeah, it's it, really cool. It, we were both keen to do it, but also it takes a lot of effort to do. I can imagine. And Look so, at this. Yeah, and and then the planning for it yeah. and then the editing and but so on. It was since rocking up to weddings since we've started doing yeah. this so and there's probably like at least four vendors that we actually get to go there and we talk to now. Yeah. Whereas before that it was kind of you'd okay, see other other that? vendors like, Hey, how are you? and that'd be it. Yeah, and yeah. whereas now it's like you actually know people. Yeah. yeah. And like coming back to being lonely in the wedding industry, we feel like we're rocking up to weddings and we do have this community and we are on a deeper level than just superficial, so like, hey, good. what's up? Yeah. Yeah. So it is, it's been exactly. really good for us. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's deep and, and also um, you guys are making us feel less lonely. Hey, I have yeah. to say, when you guys invited me, I was like, yeah, <laughs> yes, let's do this. Yeah. So thank you so much. Hey. Wouldn't have anyone else. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the Wedco podcast. We're dropping a fresh episode every week featuring industry professionals dishing out the wedding wisdom you need to turn those dreams into reality. Make sure you are following us on social media, you have those notifications turned on so we can help plan your wedding day. Your dream wedding day just got a whole lot easier. Thanks for listening.